In a lamp, an aggressive man is tied up to the chair by the soldiers. Suddenly, the man is loose and attacks one of the guards. A scientist storms in to back up the military. However, he gets bitten in the arm. The team has to rescue his life in less than two minutes. What happens next? This is Movie Shortens. Follow us to get through a movie titled Agent Zero. Be aware, spoilers are to be served. Now let's begin. Scientists are looking into a new super strain of rabies known as Mad Dog Disease, which first appeared on humans. The virus alters the patient's personalities. Acute aggressiveness, a reduced sense of pain and restlessness, and obsessive behaviors are among the symptoms. The disease spreads so quickly that society is on the verge of collapse. Billions of people worldwide become the predators or the infected. If bitten, people turn violent in 90 seconds. Only a few uninfected people remain and seek refuge beneath the ground. A small group of medical and military personnel are desperately looking for patient zero, whose blood the scientists hope to use as a vaccine. Today, Morgan, Scooter, Dr. Rose, and Colonel Knox gather to investigate a new case. There are at least three soldiers to escort one infected. Morgan plays the music before entering the booth. Music is the only thing that affects them as their brain neurology has been rewired and it becomes a tool against them. Morgan was bitten by an infected but did not transform to the infection. On the other hand, he develops the ability to communicate with the infected. He is the only one who can understand and be understood by them. This makes him essential to the research of Dr. Rose, who uses Morgan to interview infected prisoners in her search for patient zero. The today infected named Joe who killed 250 soldiers. He's from Minnesota and was infected in October. Dr. Rose immediately collects the data as this is the earliest time of infection they found. To put Joe at ease, Morgan encourages him to have a sip of wine. Morgan understands how bloodthirsty it is when one gets infected. However, the military interrupts the interview. The sound from the mic provokes Joe again. Morgan becomes angry and steps out, blaming Knox for messing up his approach. Colonel Knox storms to Morgan and forces him to get back inside. Dr. Rose raises her voice to stop Knox. The colonel then enters the booth where Joe is tied up and shoots the man right in the head. Morgan and others are shocked at what Knox has done. Dr. Rose warns Knox not to overstep the authority again. If not, she'll strip his command from the lab. Dr. Rose arrives in the bathroom to check on Morgan. To calm Morgan down, Rose gives him some pills. However, Morgan refuses to take any more. He tells Rose that he keeps having nightmares and vivid flashbacks about Janet, his wife. He could not save her from the infected last year. The two then make love right in the bathroom. Later, Morgan brings a syringe down to the underground base. Janet is being held captive here as part of an experiment with Morgan's blood. The next day, another infected is brought in. While the soldiers manage to strain the man in the chair, he accidentally breaks out and attacks them. Scooter rushes in to control the monster only to get bitten in the arm. The team immediately carries Scooter out within the 90 seconds before he is transformed. Rose rapidly cuts his arm to stop virus spreading. A moment later, Scooter is saved and stays human in time. The team shares a happy moment for Scooter. Shortly after that, Scooter encounters an acute shock. Knox orders the staff to tie Scooter up. Rose tries to save Scooter for the last time but it's too late. Scooter ends up infected. As he is turned and strikes up, Knox shoots him to death to save the team. After Scooter's death, Knox hides in the bathroom and cries for the poor man. Rose and Morgan comfort each other. The two then visit Scooter's son, who also get killed earlier in the outbreak. The next day, Morgan gets to interview the previous infected, who bit Scooter yesterday. As the man doesn't reveal any information, Morgan plays some rough music to torture him. Morgan names him Pete Townshend. When Morgan questions the infected to reveal the original infected, the man only says he comes from Minnesota and was infected in October. He refuses to provide further information. Being pissed after the death of his very best friend, Morgan draws the gun and points straight to the man. Rose tries to stop Morgan. At the end, the man still stays silent about patient Zero's identity. In the meeting room, Rose represents her study about the two infected earlier. She convinces General Pierce to start seeking for patient Zero in Minnesota. Knox, on the other hand, tells General Pierce that Rose's study is a waste of human force and should be put to an end. Rose argues they cannot reverse engineer a vaccine without patient zero. She sympathizes that there is more and more evolution in the adaptive and strategic behavior found in the infected. If delayed, the infected will soon travel in larger packs and soon they will expose the shelter. General Pierce takes Rose's side this time. 
Rose takes blood from Morgan again for Janet. She still doesn't get why only Morgan's blood can be immune from the virus. Rose reveals that some lab rats show good recovery with the resistant blood from Morgan, but it only lasts for 5 minutes, which concerns Rose about the cure from Morgan's serum. They need to find the patient zero at all costs. Rose then confesses her love to Morgan. Still, Morgan is hung up on Janet and doesn't want to mess things up. Several days later, Rose shows her pregnancy test positive. Knox and a team salute to the death of their peers. An infected who apparently evolved smarter and pretended to be dead soldier suddenly attacks the team. Knox luckily survives. He holds the gun and looks for the escaped infected. As Knox is about to get infected, Morgan storms in to rescue him. Later, the man surrenders and wants to talk with Morgan only. This time, the music strangely doesn't affect him at all. He seems to enjoy it. The man even smokes like a normal human. The team calls him the professor based on his history of teaching in the university. Through the conversation, the professor comes to speak with Morgan on purpose. It means that not only are the infected getting smarter, they know about this operation. The professor tells about how he was infected. It was a common day at the university. While talking on the phone with his wife, a pack of infected breaks in the classroom from the ceiling and attacks all of them. The professor was bitten by a student on the way out. He then returned home and ripped out his wife's body. Morgan becomes furious so he punches the professor in the face. Rose comforts Morgan, telling him not to let the professor take over the control. Suddenly, Morgan realizes something. He rushes to the underground base to see Pete. It turns out the infective have already arranged to learn about Morgan since the beginning. Pete immediately smashes his head to the wall, aiming to suicide before Morgan figure their plan. Morgan then finds a transmitter inside his chest, revealing that the infected laid a trap to learn where the base is. Morgan brings it to General Pierce. He then orders a full lockdown in the facility. However, it is too late to stop the animal packs. They enter the base out of nowhere and attack the civilians. From the control room, General Pierce realizes they all break in. The military opens fires at the intruders. They spread rapidly around the base. One by one, the humans are brought down by the fearless infected. In the quarters, the team is soon invaded. Knox chases after Rose to guide her the way out. A moment later, Knox decides to shoot General Pierce, sacrificing him as an obstacle. Knox drags Rose into the elevator to escape. However, Rose insists on returning to the lab to take her samples. She steals the gun from Knox, threatening him to let her go. She then pulls the trigger at Knox dropping him to die. Meanwhile, Morgan finally makes his way to Janet. She shows positive improvement after the trial treatment. She follows Morgan out without hurting him. On the way, the couple runs into Rose. Rose warns Morgan that Janet's symptoms might come back at any time. Morgan convinces her that Janet is recovering and he'll not leave without Janet. The three then rushes to the lab to get back the samples. After saving the samples, Rose instructs Morgan and Janet to another escape route. The three get back to the lab and climb to the air duct. They'll crawl along the air ventilator to get out. They come across an infected lab rat, which Janice dispatches before it can reach to Rose. They make it to the parking lot, which is located just below ground level. The professor confronts them, explaining that he came to the base to assassinate Morgan. Morgan is their patient zero, and he is a danger to their survival. The professor then fights fiercely with Morgan. Janet backs up for her husband. To save the two women, Morgan holds the professor to impale on a pipe. The professor then roars to call his facts joining. The trio quickly flee. Janet tells Morgan and Rose to run and she will buy them time. She then reveals to Morgan he must leave her to save the baby. Janet can sense that Rose is pregnant. Morgan and Rose pursue the tunnel through the woods until they come across a motorcycle. They ride off into the darkness, followed by packs of infected. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this and don't forget to turn on your notification. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.